Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. Do I have a video for you today? I'm not even saying great video, it's an amazing video because I talked about this a long time ago and it finally came to fruition and again, I guess I'm proven right on a lot of the stuff that goes on in the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Before I get started, please check us out on all the platforms, member programs on Patreon, YouTube, my book, Gangster Redemption. It talks about this, this one right here, Atlanta, in this book and uh, it's gonna talk about a lot of other stuff as well. Uh, check out merch, you see I love this shirt. Three can keep a secret if two are dead. And that's what the shirt says. You guys know how much I talk about Atlanta. United States Penitentiary Atlanta. United States Penitentiary Atlanta was a penitentiary when I was there. Now it, it, it became a medium because there were too many blind spots. Uh, blind spots are places where, you know, it's a prison that's almost 120 years old this prison is gonna be. But let me tell you what has happened. And I have all the paperwork from an article broke in a newspaper called the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and this is about the prison, USP Atlanta. Well, let me tell you what happened. The corruption was so bad, the corruption was so bad that they took all the inmates and got them out of there. Now think of this. They took the inmates and got them out of there, and they transferred them all over the country. Now, I'm gonna tell you what it takes to do that. First of all, when you when you do something like that, you, first of all, it's gotta be costing them millions of dollars. To transfer and reclassify and put these people in other prisons all over, all over the country is just a mind boggling to shut down a prison with 1,800 inmates. And as of Friday, and this was in August, there are 134 left. And what they're gonna do is bring in what they call campers or minimum security people to come try to do the physical. The rest of the prison is on what they call lockdown. And it's on. it's been on lockdown since July. Now, we were into August, and uh, the prison went into institutional lockdown on July 22nd. Let me tell you what that entails. When a prison goes on lockdown, that means every single prisoner in that, every single prisoner in that prison is locked in their cell. No kitchen workers, no Unicor workers, no CMS workers. So that means they have to bring staff in to feed the inmates, to shower the inmates, to do everything they have to do with inmates in a prison. And I am amazed that they still have all the people who work there, these wardens, and sadly, these wardens, you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna get out of the Bureau of Prisons, they're gonna go to work for uh, uh, Core Civic, which is a fucking private prison industry group, or they're gonna work for GEO, another big bullshit prison group uh, that make billions of dollars off of, of, of uh, hardships of people and they could care less about people uh, down deep. Don't let me hear this shit people say, oh, private prisons are good, they save money. It's the worst thing in the world we can do to, ha to put a price tag on a human's head. You know, and, and, and as I say it every time in this thing, I tell it like it is, so please, please have a, an official from the Bureau of Pri Prisons see this video and, and call me and want to interview. Uh, I would fly anywhere to interview these people and I will blow them away with what I know. And they will fucking be sitting there with their jaws open and I'll make it where I have a body camera, I'll make it where they can't take the camera from me because they're not gonna shut me up about this kind of stuff. Well, to show you how bad it was, listen to this. 20 to 30 percent of the staff now this is this article and the people who pulled out other guards 20 to 30 percent of the staff are corrupt think of what i just said there miss the federal government we can run shit you can't run shit but you know it's it's really management everybody you know how let me tell you how the bureau of prisons is is, is uh set up you have the bureau of prisons in washington that's uh that's that's headquarters, that's the Bureau of Prisons. That is the main office, that's it. Then you have regions. Then you have like a region in the Southeast region, Northeast region, you know, West, Midwest, all of them. Now they're regions. And then you have the prisons themselves within those regions. So things mostly go from the prison to the region and then the region to Washington. And then Washington on up to the Attorney General of the United States and from there to the President of the United States. If President Biden 
attorney general doesn't get off his ass and fix the Bureau of Prisons. It's just another one. I'm gonna start, we're gonna start some kind of campaign. We're gonna do something to try to open their eyes to the corruption that goes on in prisons. And because this memo sickened me when I read it, and that's why I wanted to do this video. But anyway, let me give you the, the core of this video first before I get into the details a little bit. They found so many, so much drugs and cell phones and inmates in the camp leaving to go to restaurants and into town through a hole in a fence in the camp. Most camps don't even have a fence. I'm not going to get it. I'm going to go to security level that in a minute. And then they catch them. They, catch, they, they set up an FBI and, and uh, police sting and they were waiting for people to just come through the gates. And that was in 2017. But I'm, I'm going to get into this thing, so, so the whole thing. Listen to this. In the education department in Atlanta, and I know where it was very well, uh, I actually worked in the education department there. I did legal stuff and, and worked in, in the libraries and stuff. In the same, This is the same day prevalence of narcotics and cellular devices being used by inmate population. What do you think they get? It? Watch this. The same day a prison teacher found 24 cell phones. This is a prison teacher. This is just in the education department. They found 24 cell phones, 30 chargers, earbuds, Under Armour long underwear, wrapped bundles of leafy substance, weed grinders, assorted chains and necklaces, and a bottle of air freshener. And that was just in the education department. Now, I kind of get a kick out of that because, I, you know, in prison things happen. Guards are corrupt, and it took. It used to take a lot to corrupt the guard. I guess it doesn't anymore. I think because they see how much bullshit's going on, and they see so many people in prison for weed and some stupid fucking charges that they get mad, and they say, you know, why am I holding this guy? I go home and smoke weed, and now I got to This guy's in prison for weed. I mean, don't think it's not happening, people. It's happening right now. I can go and my friend Paul Tolini, and you all know him from this channel, we can go pull cases right up now that there are people in, in, in prison for weed. I don't give a fuck how much you sell. You sell a bale of weed and you're in prison for 20 years? You know, we have such a disparity. And yeah, I'm pissed. Everybody's gonna say, Larry got mad at this video. You're, I did. I was at this prison. Matter of fact, go to USP Atlanta and Google it on Wikipedia. They actually have me as what they call a famous inmate in there. Uh, and, and uh, you know, notable, uh, notable inmates that were in Atlanta. I'm one of them. Well, a little more than two weeks later, BOP sent out members notifying the staff then for, and senior staff officers, along with one wage earner, had been four senior officers along with one wage supervisor. I don't know what that means. I think that's probably like a uh, guy that, that, that goes into the unicorn and gets paid just a wage to supervise inmates, had been barred from the federal pen and should not be allowed entry under any circumstances. Okay, they're corrupt, boom, big deal. Only four of them in that prison? Every prison has three or four or whatever they so, you know, who knows? They were barred in the interest of the efficiency of the service, the memo stated. Oh yeah, that's a fucking good one, huh? Listen to this, to the employees in the prison through the oblique, I don't get that word, uh, wording concealed nothing. One complaint of the Bureau of Prisons had gone nuclear in rooting out problem employees while others said an overhaul was long overdue. We've been shouting from the rooftop for years and they do a don't do a damn thing, said one longtime employee who fears losing his job if his identity was revealed, and it's been a long time coming. Let me tell you something, how long time coming it is in, in USP Atlanta. How about, I was in USP Atlanta from 1997 to 1999. And it was a fuck up then. It was more violent than it is now, obviously, but it was a major fuck up. But you know, I, I would get calls from people, people I know on the inside, yes, on the inside, in prison. Hey, Larry, did you hear what's going on in Atlanta? And the, you know, the rumor mill, everybody, you know, and it goes out throughout the whole prison. You know, listen, once they start, when you transfer 1,600 inmates and they're getting on Con Air and buses to all over the fucking country, Everybody's saying, well, hey, you hear what's going on? They transfer everybody. A bunch of guards got caught. Uh, fucking drugs. They found this. They found that. 
Obviously, we know that is true, but the management, I, you know, I didn't, I'm gonna wanna hear that the warden was fired and he can never get a job at any other prison or if he goes to a private prison, he can't get a contract with any government agents, he can't get a purveyor. They gotta be some kind of stranglehold to have on these senior people. Uh, the regional director, that dude should be fired. That dude should be fired. And here's what pissed me off. Look at this. This past April, an inmate at the medium security, uh, medium security prison was accused of running, listen to this, a drug trafficking org organization from his cell. Listen, investigators said the man was overseeing distribution of methamphetamine in coordination with a Mexican drug cartel from his prison cell. The case is pending. I'm gonna read just a few things in the last few years. And and I was there a few years ago, or not not less than a year, probably about a year ago when I did that video. In 2019, a prisoner used a cell phone to record a 49 minute long Facebook live session where he bragged that he had murdered a man and got away with it. Now, the Facebook showed it, and people asked me, you know, there was a guy online here uh, uh, that, that's got a cell phone in one of these prisons, he's been in for a long time. And I actually, you know, through somebody else, they contacted him. He wanted to come on my show. And, and I thought really long and hard about it. But anybody who does a show with that guy, that guy has a cell phone that's an escape charge. That, that, that's serious stuff. And what happens if something happens, that the big investigation comes and now it's Larry Lawton. You know, you don't think they're gonna think Larry Lawton is, is giving him aid and comfort or aid, aid to escape or something? You know they want me. You know they want me because I don't give a fuck and I expose the Bureau of Prisons because it's the biggest corrupt organization. There's no, this is what's gonna piss me off when I read this memo to you guys. 2018, a former congressional officer, a, co a correctional officer was sentenced to prison for accepting $3,500 in bribes to smuggle tobacco to prison. That's nothing. You know, one of the biggest mistakes the Bureau of Prisons ever made was taking tobacco out of prisons. I really believe that. Uh, don't give me this fucking shit they give a fuck about your health. I, I, I gotta stop my cursing and I know it. It just, it gets me pissed, I think, you know, cause the bullshit that goes on and, and what they justified doing. I mean, that was the biggest, I mean, these people have nothing and let's just take their, their, their you know, let me explain something about federal prison. It's not like state prison, everybody. Everyone thinks state's great, uh, uh, worse than fed. There's no TVs in your cell. There's none of the shit you got in state prisons. I mean, you know what it'd be to have a TV in a cell? I mean, I showed the BOP and we did the numbers where if they let inmates get a TV in their cell, they can cut down on violence, make money, make money, and help people along to maybe do their time just that little easier. But no, you think they'll do that? Nah, let's just keep taking more and more away. Let's see how bad we can make it when other countries, Germany, Switzerland, Norway, uh, I could go all over the country, all over the world, from Canada, whatever, any non-third world country, and America looks like a bunch of idiots. They really do. It, it, it's the biggest shame I have for this country. It, it, it really is. Four years, inmates at the minimum security. Now, let me explain how a penitentiary works. Next to any penitentiary, and Atlanta was a penitentiary, it's got 40 foot walls going around the whole prison. They're 20 feet underground, they're 40 feet high, and they're three feet thick. That's the walls going around the whole penitentiary and they got uh, gun towers all over. In fact, in 1902 or three, it was the most poured concrete job uh, in the United States at that time. Most poured concrete. I mean, it was just amazing how much concrete they had to pour to make that. Just think of a 60 foot wall. You should see how big this whole complex is. It's unbelievable. In every penitentiary, next to the penitentiary, they have what they call a camp or minimum security. It's not even minimum. They have low, minimum, low, medium, high, and supermax. Uh, supermax is ADX. Used to be Marion. I don't even think it's there anymore. It's just the ADX. But anyway, in the, in, in the, the, the system, the security level, so they have a camp. It's called a camp. We call it a camp. Minimum, they call it minimum. It's a camp, prison camp. And normally, most prison camps, and I showed you guys the outside of a prison camp, at Jessup, which is three hours from Atlanta. That fucking place right there, uh, Jessup, I showed you, the people can walk off the off the uh, prison grounds, literally walk off the grounds. 
Now, obviously, if they get caught, that's an escape charge, and they go up a level of security or two. Might even go to Atlanta, the holdover, the penitentiary, and you didn't want that. Uh, obviously, they probably wouldn't go to a penitentiary, but maybe, depending on how much they hate you and, and, and the politics that goes along with that. Well, listen to this. For years, inmates at the minimum security camp, prison camp, would temporarily leave through a hole in the fence to fetch booze, drugs, cigarettes, cell phones, and food. In 2017, some were finally caught and a new warden was named. Yet, nearly a year later, inmates were still leaving the prison camp to get contraband for parties. Contraband for parties. Listen, don't get me wrong, good for them, good for the inmates. It's the staff that they're gonna be taking it out on all these poor guys who didn't do a thing. And that's what's going to happen in this new place. They're going to come down so hard on them and they're going to be abusing inmates. I guarantee it's happening. It's sad it's happening all over the country as it is. It's happening. It's happening and it's going to happen real bad coming up. When I was in the prison system, they, they brought in Willie Scott, which is a, trouble, a troubleshooting warden. Big Willie Scott, never forget, fucking put me in the hole. Uh, that motherfucker didn't play. He had control over a prison where he can bypass the region and go right to Washington and transfer inmates all over the country. I don't know what they did to bring that, but that guy, but he would give you a beating beforehand. They would throw you a beating. They weren't, they weren't nice about it, I'll tell you that. In 2014, a guard was charged with smuggling heroin and other drugs into the low security camp. Now, when I think of that, I think of one, how stupid the guard is. Camp inmates, most of them are rats anyway, and now all of a sudden you're bringing heroin and drugs into a camp. You're gonna get caught. Uh, my friend Massey did the same thing, and it was on tape saying it. Uh, and he, he says it was the biggest mistake he ever made, you know, dealing with camp inmates. And in 2011, a pri listen to this. A prison physician, Lewis Jackson, molested three inmates seeking medical treatment at the USP. One of the inmates made an undercover recording and Jackson later admitted he sexually assaulted the men. So not only are they, are they, are they messing up, they, they, they have medical staff that just don't give a shit. We, we know that. That's another thing. So, and here you're going to have another thing which pisses me off about this. This is what really pisses me off. This is an actual memo from the Bureau of Prisons from a Captain Brownfield, a Deputy Captain R. Brownfield, about modified lockdown in operations in Atlanta. So here it is. This is notice to inform you. This is now to the staff. This is a memorandum to all staff at the prison. This is a notice to inform you that effective immediately and until further notice, all inmates will remain secure in their cells. Specifically, due to the increase in prohibited activity from the inmate population and noted security concern. Specifically, the prevalence of narcotics and cellular devices being used by the inmate population. I love the way they fucking play, throw everything on the inmates. How do you think they got fucking heroin, drugs, cell phones, booze, food into the prison? Let's lock down the fucking goddamn guards. But anyway... Here's what got me mad reading this. So they, this is their memo to themselves. Now, it costs them money to do this, so taxpayers alone should be pissed. I mean that. Uh, we, the taxpayers, are paying for these assholes. That's the big problem right now. So a modified lock, here listen, it may pop, a modified lockdown operation plan of action has been initiated. All inmates will be afforded an opportunity to conduct hygiene every three calendar days. So you're supposed to get a shower every three days. So that makes it twice a week, not three times a week, but twice a week. And do you think they're doing that? If you do, you don't watch this channel too much and you should go on other channels and other places. They have regulations, but they're gonna do the same thing for the safe and orderly running of the institution. We can't do that. We don't have staff. It's gonna be a whole fucking bunch of bullshit. Okay, three day count. Additionally, steps have been taken to conduct laundry exchange for the housing units. Last time I was in a lockdown, they didn't do that and they didn't even give us toilet paper. 
So we were wiping our ass with t-shirts. Yes, I know it's disgusting. And throwing them out through the shoot doors when they gave us food. Because they, they didn't give a shit. They don't have the manpower to do laundry. Because the whole prison is locked down. They have to bring in secretaries. And they have to bring in uh, uh, office clerical workers. Educational workers. Everybody has to come in and work on something. And then they got to really work. They're not sitting there telling an inmate to do it. They actually got to do the work. And housing. During his modified operation, any continued disregard from the inmate population to follow the rules and regulations will be promptly reported, addressed, and disciplinary sanctions imposed if required. They say in that because the inmates are going to go crazy because they're not getting a shower. They're not going to get uh, proper food. They're not going to get laundry or anything clean. They're going to live like animals animals and this is what this country doesn't understand we have a population of over 2.3 million people who are being abused and i mean that being abused and and you know yes people may you're gonna say oh they're inmates they don't care i'm gonna get the comments i'm gonna get some people saying listen larry we don't care he killed somebody he did this until it's you or your friend and there are people in there who are innocent number one number two there are people in there who maybe had a vehicular homicide by accident on a DUI. Now, it's wrong, he's doing time, but it, does he deserve to be abused like that? I don't think so. And until, until you see it, until you have it happen to you, you don't get it. And you don't, because I think I'm a good guy. I, I, I treat people with respect. I, I enjoy people. Uh, you know, I, ne I never went out of my way to hurt somebody, did anything. These people, you know, they do it under the color of law in a fucking memo. Let me keep it going. In order to make, listen, this is why they're doing it. In order to maintain a safe, secure, and this is the word that pissed me off, rehabilitative environment for both staff and inmates. Your continued compliance with all directives is both expected and appreciated. You know, I don't know when they started changing the word, wording safe, secure, and rehabilitative environment they think putting in that word makes them that they're doing it first of all what they used to say and i'm sure they still say it, it's for the safe and orderly running of the institution and that's how they get away with not giving you recreation do you think they're letting these people go out to wreck to even get a little bit of fresh air these people probably going to be locked down this case this article came out in august they were locked down this has been since july they're all and this is worse than even the whole lockdown because they know how to handle it this is where They'll miss food, they don't give it, 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 you guys have no idea really how bad the American prison system is. And I, I guarantee there's some guards there saying, ah, that's bullshit, not my prison. Oh, we don't do that, that's not, you know, I'll bring on as many inmates and guards that tell me this goes on. How's that? I'll bring on your fellow guards, if you're watching this, who will tell me what goes on in that prison. And uh, you could tell all you want. If you're a guard and you're watching, you know your warden gets a bonus for the money he's, for the programs he cuts, for your overtime he cuts. If you're a guard watching this, that warden gets a bonus. How fucking disgusting is that setup of fucking compensation? It, it, it's out of whack. Here it says right here, a review of the facilities video monitoring system revealed that staff were able to enter the facility during the night shift walk around the metal detectors without being screened the inspector general's report states after discussing the matter with bo personnel at the facility we are concerned that this presents systematic concerns no shit i don't know where this warden is but his name should be in the paper as if he's been fired he can't work at another facility he'll never get an his pension should be cut i mean that they should do things like that uh listen they have prisoners and cell phones, everything from self-incriminating Facebook Live, and I told you about that, running a, a drug operation right from prison. Listen to this. A long-time employee said some guards would come in with backpacks, duffel bags that were never searched. The source told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution a carton of cigarettes would be worth 1000 That's cheap. 2000 is what Massey told me. Uh, parcels. Listen to this. Uh, parcels of methamphetamine would turn up in hiding places all over the prison. Those hiding places exist all over the prison and have taken a toll on its infrastructure, the long-time employee said. What do you mean you take a toll? 
The place is built in 1902. Uh, uh, It'll be up to the prisoners who stayed behind to tackle the physical rehabilitation of the facility that in January, this January, turns 120 years old. So that prison was built in 1902. One guard said, I'd say 20 to 30% of the officers were dirty, he said. And that's just totally unacceptable. You're always going to have a few. Most prison, prisons have one, two, or maybe three bad apples. Not a quarter of the staff. Listen to this. Complaints to top officials from the warden on down largely went unanswered. It is because nobody cares about what goes on in that facility. Nobody on the outside is watching. The inspector general isn't watching. They have this bullshit, and I'm calling it bullshit right now, American Accreditation, uh, 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 ACA, Accreditation Association or whatever it is. It's all bullshit too. Uh, you all, I'm gonna give the BOP right something very good right now. BOP, listen, and I hope somebody from the BOP watches this and maybe we can send it to them. If you're out there and you wanna forward it to anybody in the Bureau of Prisons in Washington or any senator or congressman, please send this to any congressman, any senator you know, and I'll tell you how you can fix the Federal Bureau of Prisons. The Federal Bureau of Prisons. You put together a team, I will be on that team. You get a person like myself who understands the working from an inmate perspective. I will build the team. Don't, don't you give me the people. I will build the team. I will get myself a guard a administrator, a nurse or doctor, and I will get uh, maybe a, a couple of other uh, administrative officials and I will build my team. Here's how the only way it works. You give my team unfeathered access into any federal prison we wanna go, any time we wanna go, and I guarantee you we'll fix prison system, we'll stop abuses of inmates, We'll weed out your bad apples a lot quicker than you could. And we will report to you. We will report to a specific person, whether it's the Attorney General of the United States. We will report to somebody to fix the prison. Because when I can go in, I can talk to the inmate that's being beaten and abused. He won't talk to a guard. He won't talk to an administrator. He'll talk to me. And I'll know how to protect him after he talks to me. I will know how to, to monitor him so the prison doesn't fucking kill him. And the prison does they, you know, don't put him underground again. I will know how to monitor him with my staff to call that prison every day to make sure he's right, to have surprise visits. The key is surprise. I don't want you to know that I'm coming two weeks now and you take the inmates and you and you hose and you pressure clean the, the fucking dry, you know, the walkways and you put out the best food you can. Oh, the warden don't mind putting up a few more thousand that day because he looks good. The shit that he's taking for bonus, that's coming right after they leave. When they take an inmate who's got mental problems and he's putting feces all over his face and putting feces on the wall and, draw, and drawing demonic pictures. When that inmate's doing that, you know what happens during an inspection? They put him in a faraway place and they say it's a quarantine cell because he's got some kind of sickness or some bullshit and they'll muzzle him. They'll put him in a fucking dry cell. They'll put him so far on the ground he can't fucking scream and talk when people come through that prison. First of all, they don't know where to go. They gotta put a team together and give me the authority to go in. And when I walk in a prison at 10 at night or two in the morning and I'm denied access to that prison, somebody needs to be fired that day. Gets a call, he's fired, he can never work in the BOP again. A memo goes out, if this team knocks on your door, they have unfeathered access into a prison. And anything they wanna see, and any way they wanna go, they can do it. Once that happens, now they can't cover up bullshit. They can't wait for the inspection to come. You know, right now, a senator or a congressman, there's 435 congressmen, there's 100 senators, and they're the 535 uh, of the most powerful people in the United States. Did you know? Senator Mitch McConnell, Senator uh, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Tim McCarthy, not one of them are allowed to just go up to a prison and say, I want to come in and inspect that prison. They can't do it. They won't be allowed. Think of that. 
Now, of course, the warden's called, and what do you think he's going to fix everything up before that guy can come in the next day? There's no surprise visits allowed. Why? Tell me why that is. Don't give me some security bullshit. That's bullshit. It's because they want to cover up crimes, crimes that they're committing against humanity. And you know what? If the real world knows all about this stuff, they're going to start creaming about the United States. Shitty fucking human rights fucking wreck it. Please, United States, don't talk about any other country's human rights until you fix your own. And I'm here to help, and I love my country. But I'm telling you what, this is a stain that is on our hands and our, our minds and our bodies for everybody to see. And the more we have cell phones, the more we have communications, the more people are turning around and, and we have such good people. You know, I was on Discord today and I love Discord. Uh, I talk to a lot of my fans and a lot of the people that follow me. I have 1.3 million and we're growing every day. And now Discord has 16,000 rabid, rabid fans that want to help. And, you know, I'm on there and I, I hear some good young people with good thoughts, good ideas. And, and that's what makes me positive about the younger people. It's these older people who think they know all this shit and they're running the crap and they don't know shit. And I will gladly come to Washington if you're a senator or a congressman. I will put it all over the country, all over the world, what you're trying to do to, to, to stop the, the bullshit that's going on. Though it shouldn't be taking years and years and years for fixing a system. It should never take that. It's terrible, man. And, and, and it's got me sick. It's got me sick. I, I gotta go. I know I've been on this topic. I wanted to bring this topic back up because I just was... You know, in the last year or so, I was in front of Atlanta, and the crap was going on real bad there. And the place gives me the creeps, it still does. And I, I hope people understand that we need to change this stuff. And I know I, I'm not a guy just beating a drum. I know what I'm talking about. I was there. I was abused. I was in those places that these people don't give a shit about you. I was there when Cartret was fucking breaking people's legs and fucking beating people. Go look them up online. Go look them up on the federal lawsuits and see how many lawsuits are against that guy. And he still was in the BOP, I heard not long ago. I don't know what the fuck he's doing now. I right, found God, good. I hope he changed his life. Because he has a lot to atone for. A lot more than a lot of people in that prison did too. He should have been there. But it is what it is. With that said everybody, please stay safe. I'm sorry I get a little bit emotional on these things. This is something that, that needs to be fixed. And until it's fixed, I'm not going to stop talking about it. You have a great day, everybody. Please, please make one good choice a day. Don't go where I ended up. I always try to tell people, do, do something nice for somebody every day. And, and, and you're going to feel good about it. I got a great audience. And thank you for watching. I love you guys. Please stay safe. Stay connected. I'll see you soon.